Well, this is a luxury of sorts we take for granted every night, and it's found in nearly every city and town across America. Artificial light. But before any of that, in the late 1800s, an inventor used his own technology to make Wabash the first electrically lit city in the world. It shows uh, in, a, in a really interesting way how small town people can come together and engage in a unique project together that ends up accidentally planning us into world history. As the sun sets over Wabash, lights throughout the town dispel the darkness like they have since March 31st, 1880. We're really well known as the first electrically lighted city in the world. So how does this corner of 21 country hold such a special title? That's kind of a strange distinction because I should point out that there were other places using electric lights in other contexts, but we were the first city to use only electric lights to light our town. Back when this courthouse was brand new, its positioning in the hilly town caught the eye of Cleveland inventor Charles Brush. He had started this dynamo company and then it modified an arc lighting system. Well, a problem with arc lighting is you're touching two carbon rods together and then pulling them apart as the arc, and the arc of electricity between the two rods makes your electricity. He invented a motor that made sure that the arc lights stayed a certain distance apart so you got a consistent light level. The technology showed the small community was willing to make a big move toward the future. They invited people from all over the country to come. There were delegations from New York City. They ended up lighting Broadway with the brush system as a result. Philadelphia and several other small towns in the area that didn't have lighting systems yet. But to those who live nearby, the glamour wore out pretty quickly. Well, the people who live around the courthouse directly, because there's housing all around it, hated the lighting system because they would leave it on until 2 a.m. most nights. And so they would have a flickering light coming in all night long that was really intense around the courthouse. Also, someone had to climb the tower of the courthouse, open a special hatch and change the rods every two weeks. And that was also pretty unpopular. After eight years, the brush arc lights that made the town so famous were abandoned. They did hold on a lot longer in other applications. Factories used the brush lighting system for 50 more years. Arc projection in movie projectors lasted into the 1970s, so there, the light system held on in other applications. Though it remains today a bright spot in history. It definitely raised Wabash's profile with other bigger towns around us as a place that was willing to engage in experiments. Uh, the mayor at the time was a brigadier general from the Civil War, and he said that it, it exemplified a progressive spirit that was willing to grow into a new era uh, because the 1880s were a time of major technological change, and he wanted to sort of plant the flag that Wabash would be that sort of place. Hey, that's pretty neat, huh? It is. Yeah. Uh, the Wabash County Historical Museum has been closed these last two weeks to reset their displays for the new year. They open again next Tuesday, and the courthouse lighting display featured in the story. It's under renovation now. It'll be unveiled with updates in March.